Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a really special video for you guys. As you can see from the title, I'm going to show you 60 tips and tricks every SketchUp user should know about. As you can imagine behind this short video, there are hours of work and research, so I would really appreciate it if you could at least click that like button. Keep in mind that all these tips are related to default SketchUp tools and there are no plugins in this video. That's because I'm actually working on a top 30 plugins sketch a video so be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that content in the future and yes i'm sure some of these tips will be familiar to some of you but i'm also 100 percent sure that even the most skilled sketchup user out there will find something he or she didn't know about and yes some can't even be called proper tips or tricks but rather advices that i wish someone gave me back when i was starting out with sketchup about some 20 years ago so enough with the chit chat and let's start with number one, the mother of them all. Learn to use inferencing. Inferencing in SketchUp is like your personal prediction engine. For example, if you hover over a point and then move a cursor in a certain direction, SketchUp will try to predict what you're trying to do and place your point on an axis. Same thing happens when hovering over lines or faces. Number two. So when you're drawing a line or moving an object, like in this case, you can lock the movement on a direction by holding shift, or you can use the arrow keys instead. Up or down arrow to lock it on blue axis, right arrow locks the red axis, and left arrow locks the green one. Number three, you can double click on a face to select also the edges that define the face. Number four, you can triple click on a face or an edge to select all connected geometry. Number five, use double click and triple click in combination with the shift key to select complicated selections like in this case. Instead of clicking on every single edge, double click on the face to select the face with all the edges and then hold shift to deselect the face and keep selected only the edges. Number six, when you use box select inside SketchUp, you will also select geometry that is possibly hidden behind the face. So be very careful when selecting small parts of a larger piece of geometry. I personally use it only when I want to select literally everything. Number seven, you can draw a rectangle from its center if you press control after activating the rectangle tool. Number eight, you can increase the number of segments of a circle or an arc right after activating the tool if you press Ctrl plus or decrease it with Ctrl minus. Number nine, you can set an exact number of segments of a circle or an arc if you type a value and push enter right after activating the tool like this or even after creating the circle by typing the value followed by the letter S and you can change your mind as many times as you like as you can see. Number 10. SketchUp beginners often assume that they need to click on the measurement box before they can start typing. We've just seen from the last tip that's just not the case. You can just start typing and whatever you type shows up in the box automatically. Number 11. You can use the circle tool to draw polygons just by changing the number of segments. A four segment circle will create a square, a six segment circle will create a hexagon and so on. Number 12. After push pulling a face, you can just type a number, push enter and SketchUp will adjust the distance of the push pull automatically. And just like changing the circle segments I've shown you earlier, you can keep changing the value of the push pull for as many times as you like. This SketchUp behavior that lets you change your mind is similar to almost all other tools. Number 13. With the push-pull tool, you can double-click on a face to repeat the last push-pull operation. Number 14. The units of the value you type in the measurement box are defined in the unit section of the model info here, but you can override default units by typing the unit after the value. So since my default units are centimeters, instead of typing 100, I just type 1M, as in meter. Number 15. With the push-pull tool, if you press the control key and that little plus sign appears next to your cursor, you will leave a copy of the face after you complete the push-pull. Number 16. Do not copy-paste inside SketchUp. Instead, use the move tool to create a copy. Just activate the move tool, press control, remember this little plus next to the cursor, 
and you will create a copy. The same thing will happen if you press Ctrl with the Rotate tool. You will leave a copy behind. Number 17. You can create multiple copies after a move or a rotate operation if you just type a value followed by the letter X. Number 18. You will create multiple copies also if you type a number followed by the backslash, but they will be placed equally spaced between the original and the first copy of your object. You can change your mind countless times with this operation too. See? Number 19. You all know how to use the move tool. Select something, activate a tool, and click to move. But did you know that you can move without pre-selecting? Just hover over the object with the move tool, click and move it. This way you can even move single points in SketchUp, which is actually the only way to move single points since you cannot pre-select them. Number 20. When you try to move a face that is stuck on a plane, press Alt to unlock it. The face will still be glued to the geometry, but you'll be able to move it in all three directions. Number 21. When rotating an object, you can lock the rotation plane with the arrow keys, similarly to locking the axis with the move tool. Number 22. When scaling, if you hold the control key, the object will scale from the center. Pressing shift, it will toggle between uniform and ununiform scale, and holding both control and shift, it will do both regardless of the handle you're holding. Number 23. You can make something a certain size just by using the scale tool and typing the value and units. Let's go with 50 on this one and don't forget the units, regardless of what the default units are, and press enter. There you go, a box of 50 centimeters exactly. Number 24. Let me show you how to hide some of the scale handles of a component. Select a component, find the dynamic component toolbar and open components attributes here. You just need to add the scale tool attribute and uncheck unwanted handles. Now when scaling, only checked handles remain active. Number 25. Don't be afraid to navigate with the mouse even in the middle of using a tool. You can zoom, pan and orbit regardless of the operation you've started. Number 26. Use eraser tool with control key to smooth edges. Number 27. Use eraser tool with shift key to hide an edge. What's the difference you may ask? The answer is the shading. When we smooth an edge, we tell SketchUp to treat these faces as curved, while as when we hide an edge, we just chose not to display it, but we still want the faces to be treated as flat surfaces as you can see from the shading here. Number 28. You can erase multiple objects with the eraser by clicking and dragging. Number 29. Working with organic forms, flipped faces, showing back face is something you'll surely encounter. Instead of right-clicking and reversing every face one by one, you can right-click and select Orient Faces and it will flip all of them at the same time. Number 30. Always model in default material, so that if a flip face happens, you'll be able to spot it and correct it right away. See that here, when there is a material applied to this group, we cannot see that the face is actually flipped. Avoid applying material to back faces. That can cause a lot of problems later if you ever want to render a model. Number 31. Another double click action can be used right after an offset action, and it will of course repeat the last offset. Number 32. You can fillet a two dimensional angle with the arc tool. So just start the arc anywhere and then hover over the other edge finding the tangent. We will show with this magenta color. Now click, move the cursor away for a second and then find the magenta arc again. Now without moving the cursor, type whichever dimension of the radius you want. Let's go with 50, press enter and there you go. Number 32. Right after you completed a fillet operation, you can double click on a face near an angle and it will repeat the same fillet operation with the same radius. Number 34. When using the follow me tool, you can select a face instead of a path. Number 35. You can subtract the shape with the follow me tool. Check out this result. Number 36. Have you ever wanted to use the tape measure to measure a distance from an edge? only to create a guide instead. What you need to do in this situation is press Ctrl. There it is. Now you can measure the distance with no issues. 
Number 37. Guides are cool sometimes, but they also often get in the way. And deleting them one by one is a huge waste of time. And that's when you should use Edit Delete Guides. Number 38. For those of you who don't want to delete the guides because they may become useful again later, there is always View Hide Guides. If you work a lot with guides, creating a custom shortcut would be the way to go. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Number 39. With the Paint Bucket tool active, you can hold Alt for the Eye Drop tool, so you can choose your active material from any face of your model. Number 40. With the Paint Bucket tool, while holding Shift, you can paint all faces having the same material. This one is a huge time saver. Number 41. Use shortcuts. They will speed your work significantly. If a tool you use a lot doesn't have a default shortcut assigned, just create a custom one. For example, I use Alt-Y to show or hide hidden geometry. To set a shortcut, go under Window, Preferences, Shortcuts, right here. Number 42. Assign a custom shortcut to hide rest of the model, and you'll be able to switch between these two view modes with just a keystroke. It's something you'll use a lot, trust me. Number 43. If you are a beginner, this sticky SketchUp behavior is something that happens a lot. To avoid it, you just need to make groups or components. But if this sticky geometry problem happens, this is how you solve it. Select all geometry you want to move, copy it with the Move tool, make a group or component, and delete the original. Clean up a bit and place the group where we should go. Number 44. Memorize this simple rule to distinguish groups from components. Create groups if you're creating something that is unique, but make components instead if it's something that's going to have an exact copy somewhere else in the model. Best example, identical windows. Why make components? Changing one, the others change as well. Imagine the time you'll save when you need to change just the thickness of a windowsill, for example. Number 45. Don't be afraid to create components inside components. Using them wisely will save you a lot of time. Imagine having to change this chair leg four times instead of just once. Number 46. Another cool thing about components. You can replace multiple components with a different component of your choice. Select it from the component tray, right click and replace selected. Talk about a time saver. Number 47. Tags used to be called layers. You should model only in the untagged tag, or layer 0 in the older versions. And that's because all of your vertices, edges and faces should be untagged. Place something on a different tag only after you make something a group or a component. This will keep your model clean and avoid weird visibility issues like this one for example. Number 48. You can put different parts of your model inside different tags to switch between different versions of your concepts. Number 49. If you find yourself constantly switching tags on and off, use scenes to memorize tag visibility and to control it with just one click. Number 50. Save a view with scenes. For example, you can have an autographic top view under one scene and perspective view under another and a detailed zoom view under another one. Number 51. Disable scene transition under model info to work faster. Number 52. Keep your model organized by finding a system for naming your components. If you use a lot of models from the 3D warehouse, you'll end up with a lot of components you didn't create and it will be difficult to find the ones you did. What I like to do is to put a special character sign before the name of each of my components. So when I look for them, they are all close to each other. Number 53. Keep your model clean to avoid performance issues by purging all unused materials, and especially unused components. The first thing I do when I open SketchUp is purging the default component and all its materials. Number 54. Organize your trays. I, for example, use one on each side of my screen. Number 55. You can create your own toolbars with native SketchUp tools. Just right click to choose toolbars, create a new one, give it a name, and simply click and drag a tool from any native toolbar into your custom one. 
hold control if you want to keep the tool in the default toolbar as well this doesn't work for plugin toolbars but there is a plugin called toolbar editor for that so check out the description of this video if you want to know more about that number 56 you can use the outliner to hide or unhide an object number 57 you can use the outliner to find something sometimes you'll have a lot of components so this helps a lot number 58 you can have multiple active sections the trick is to have one inside a group or a component number 59 use field of view to fit more objects into your scene but be careful of distortions caused by extremely wide camera angles and finally number 60 always remember to have the auto save option checked i have mine set to every five minutes okay guys that's all of them i really hope i was able to show you something you didn't know until now don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already thank you so much for supporting this channel and i will talk to you in the next one bye bye